So it's, it's frustrating. And so working with banking and securities, um, I appreciate that they're willing to come out and educate all of us, because I'm looking forward to the information as well, um, to know what not to do, right? What not to play into the hands of. And some of it certainly, you know, you'll think, oh, that's common sense, which it is. But sometimes people don't think about it and they're trusting. We think these things are really important, scam jams, because this is how we learn and we remember and we keep in mind. The more often we talk about frauds and scams and how to protect ourselves, the more likely we will be to remember it when we're faced with that. And so with that, I'd like to introduce from the district attorney's office, Dave Sotis. And they built up quite a fortune. Um, fast forward many decades later, Friends have died, relatives have died, except for a great niece. And that great niece ingratiated herself to Bertha, lured Bertha, her husband had passed also, and had lured Bertha from a very nice um, apartment with a grand piano and all kinds of accoutrements down in the Philadelphia area up here to live and obtained power of attorney. It's one of the most helpful documents in your advancing years. It's also one of the most dangerous documents in our advancing years. Power of attorney is a document that gives someone permission to act on your behalf. You have limited powers and you have general powers. And the easiest way to think of a power of attorney relationship is sports agency. Somebody who has a sports career budding and they are due to make a lot of money and they need somebody to help them negotiate their contract, they go out and they get a sports agent. When you create a power of attorney, you're doing exactly the same thing. You're giving somebody permission to act on your behalf. And the law requires you to participate and to monitor that relationship. You can give them the power to balance your checkbook, to pay your bills, to take care of your house, to take care of a vacation home, to do all kinds of things. But you need to remain attentive and you need to monitor that relationship. You need to look at the books and, and demand the answers because it's your money and you need to know where it goes. We do a lot of um, just kind of home maintenance and construction fraud cases. Um, Somebody shows up and they're gonna do some kind of work on your home. Usually it starts with something small like sealing your driveway and they need money to get the materials. And oh, I've got a buddy who's gonna help me, we can get it done twice as fast, but I need his money up front. Um, and you get the cash. You might, if you're lucky, get a pile of stuff in your driveway and then nothing. You know, you're chasing that person for months and, and you just don't get it. Um, you, don't, you don't get any work done, and your money's gone. Get somebody to finish one job before they're asking you for money for the next job. And don't feel embarrassed about jumping ship and saying I want to do it with somebody else, or what are you trying to pull on me? Uh, the, honest people, the honest people won't put you in that situation, and the honest people will understand the idea of I want to see my money I want to see one project finished first kind of thing. On a, almost a daily basis, we in law enforcement feel these types of phone calls. And to be honest, it breaks our heart because generally we can't get your money back. And as a law enforcement uh, 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 personnel, and as someone just with a compassionate heart, it, it's very upsetting to actually have to say those words out loud, right? I don't like to say, like, I can't help you, right? Um, and, and that's very hard. Um, but what this program is designed to do is to help prevent that. So you guys are actually helping yourselves, okay? So uh, it's coming up on tax time. Anyone been approached by the IRS? Say you will back taxes. If you don't act right now, law enforcement's coming to arrest you. We have a warrant for your arrest. You can pay right now. Anybody? Something similar, right? That's not true. The IRS is not going to call you. They're going to send you a formal notice in the mail and I can then also assure you, no one's in route to come arrest you on a warrant. Like we're not, we don't, law enforcement, we generally don't want you to know until we come knocking on that door, right? So the, it's all scare tactics. This deals with family. This is going to tug at your heartstrings. 
my grandchild just got arrested and needs bail money. Anyone had this happen yet? Oh, okay, look at this. If you feel though your grandchild isn't in, in trouble, hang up, call the next next person in line, right? That's like your sons or daughters, say, hey, I got a phone call from you know Nicholas. Is he okay? Right? And they'll probably be like, he's standing right here next to me. Right? So that that is a very, very common one. Again, they're preying on your heartstrings, right? Another one would be your bank. Okay? If your bank calls you, they have all of your information. They don't need you to verify anything, okay? That's not going to happen. Another one here too. Just like we're all playing bingo, we all like to win. Generally, you're not gonna win the lottery and get a phone call saying, hey, you won the lottery. You just have to pay for the fee of winning the gazillion dollars by, you know, a hundred dollars here or there. Or if you win, hey, random prize winner, you know, makes you feel good. We all want to kind of win. We all want to take a good opportunity when it comes forth, right? But you're not going to need to pay any kind of fees over the phone to obtain whatever it is that the lottery or the prize that you want. That's a very, very common one. No financial institution, no government agency, no lottery winning prize is going to tell you to go to the closest uh, Walgreens, Walmart, CVS, and get a Green Dot gift card or a Macy's gift card or a Visa gift card and then give them the number over the phone, okay? That is a huge red flag that whatever it is you thought was going good just turned into a scam bill. Because so law enforcement, we're already behind the eight ball, right? By the time you field that call, if you give out your personal information, that clock has already started. Once you send your personal information out there, I can't pull it back and they're now up and running using it. Your cell phone, right? That's available to be purchased your social security number, your date of birth, your home address, your phone number. So sometimes you get notified, you're like, but this guy knows like my stuff. What, well, I, this is, they, they gotta be legit, they gotta be real. No, they just purchased that information. Um, and it's, it's, it's a sad fact, right? But so those are very, very common schemes. Another one here too, is you get contact, hey, this is uh, IBM or Microsoft. Can you just go to your computer? We have to just verify some things and can, we have to remote in those, they may call it. Please do not do that. That is another wave of the future here as far as crime we're seeing. Once you get in there and you then give them remote access to your computer, there's nothing law enforcement can do as far as, by, by the time you call us and try to stop it, they've already got in there and hacked what information that they're after. So please do not allow anyone to remote into your computers. So just the nature of law enforcement is we are reactive, right? And so the scammers are picking up on this, just like anybody. Oh, they're not, now they're not answering their phones. Like last month, we got 1,000 phone calls answered. This month, we got like 200. What, what can we do? Oh, well, now let's spoof our phone number. So it looks like a doctor's office, a reputable place. You're going to answer it, okay? And then from there, now I got you, right? Can I just say this too? You guys have every ability, every power in this situation, okay? Like they can't access your stuff, they can unless you provide it. Okay, so when in doubt, do not give your information out over the phone. Don't answer the phone, right? So those are the those are the steps you guys can take to personally protect your information. But again, just starting with the financial identity theft, this is the biggest one. This whole thing is about money. Money, 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 money. Numbers lead to money. And if they can get a hand on any of our personal information, our personal numbers that uniquely identify us, we are all in databases throughout the world. My background is information system management with a concentration in application development. Fraud like this gets committed. The tax identi uh, identity theft, getting a refund in someone's name. Making sure that our mail is locked down, making sure that we don't have documents out and exposing them even in our own home. This is gonna sting to hear, but a lot of the identity theft that occurs happens from family members at times. That's the truth, it's painful, it stings to hear. Medical identity theft, they may still have personal information to get medical care. Sometimes, sometimes we may be 
in committing this at ourselves without knowing that, oh, well, you know, I just want to help so-and-so get help. I want to help them get this or get that. So we may get something for them, some medical device or medication in our name. Folks were committing identity. It's, it's also something that's illegal to do. The different types of identity theft that we are seeing and what we are doing about it at our office, here are some of those numbers. Routing numbers, credit card numbers, account numbers. Numbers lead to money. What we are called unique identifiers or primary keys in these databases. It's the reason why you can go to Kohl's or Target. I'm not picking on these companies. I'm just using an example. You go there and you're just like, oh, I want to buy this, but I forgot my credit card, my, my charge card here. They will go, no problem. What's your phone number? And you give them your phone number. That number identifies a record with your name on it and your account number on it. There you have it. Now they can make the charge to your account. From the day you were born until you walked in this room this morning, your social security number has everything you have done in life under it. Where you've lived, vehicles, Department of uh, Transportation information, everything you've done. So we have to be really careful when it comes to that number. How we allow ourselves or how we can become targets of this stuff. And again, sometimes we can put our devices down and next thing you know it's stolen from that. It's stolen from you or from a source of your information, documents, pill bottles that we throw out. You notice how I'm not saying you? I keep saying us and our. We're all a part of this. We all can get hit, and we probably have been hit to it. This is not, oh, well, we'll leave those folks alone. They carry a badge, you know. No, 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 no. Representatives, you name it, I don't care, celebrities, uh, state reps, it doesn't matter. Newborns, kids, if they've got a device, if they got a, a profile out there, they're going to get hit. Identity theft is pretty widespread nowadays and falling a victim to a scam, they laid out a, quite a few scams when they were up here. And I could go on and on about those scams and the phone calls that we all get. They were right about these phone calls. These are computer generated. We have entered a whole new world now of AI. You're going to see this stuff everywhere. It's going to become common language. AI, AGI, artificial general intelligence. What is this stuff? AI is a set of instructions or programs designed to learn all that is learnable and assist us. Criminals, uh, criminal manipulation has no limits. Deep fake frauds and supercharged scams using voice clones. Now I can call you up and with your voice or call someone else up in your voice, in the name of your voice, and I will sound just like you. You know, she mentioned, someone mentioned earlier about the grand, grandparent scam. Somebody call you up, hey, grandma, nana, pop, pop, it's me. Oh. Well, you don't sound like my grandson. You don't sound like my granddaughter. Oh, it's me. Now, the way they do it is they will have already called them, already said hello or said something to get them to engage. Four words from a person can generate a two-minute conversation. Four words can generate a two-minute conversation. That's the definition of a deep fake fraud. Supercharged clones and deep fake frauds. How to tell if someone is uh, calling for help or something like that, if it's fake or not. And again, don't trust the voice. We are in an environment now. Can we trust the phone? Can we trust the voice on the phone? Should we have a, some sort of protocol between us and our loved ones? Someone calls you up asking for money. OK, what's the password? Or where did I meet your grandfather or your grandmother at? Hey, you just have some sort of a security protocol in place. Don't text each other the security question or answer. Tell each other. Our vehicles and technology. This is what I'm going to close out on. I rented a I was down in Florida in 2022. Between August and November, I was down here five times for business. I'm renting a car each time. I get inside the rental car. You cannot have you drive with your phone up like that. You can't do it. You have to drive hands-free. I drive, okay, I hook my phone up to the car, Bluetooth it out. What do I see? All the Bluetooth contacts of the last person who was there. When you rent a car, our vehicles, full of technology now, our vehicles are our big, biggest exposures. And stories, I got stories, but I don't have time to go into a lot of them, so I'm going to go straight into this. 
please, when you rent a car or when you trade yours in, make sure you sanitize it. If you've hooked up your contacts, oh, your emails, your text messages, voicemails, uh, contacts for sure, make sure before you turn that car in to that rental agency, you sanitize, you go inside the settings, and you clear all the content. Rental agencies are not required to do that. Put gas in it, see if you damaged it, clean it up, they're off to the next customer. When you trade your vehicle in, the exact same thing. Cars have profiles of us. You've, it's still a good idea to go inside that profile and just clear that out. Inside each vehicle settings, each vehicle, but it's not hard to do. You're going to go inside your settings, you're going to find the content, and you're going to clear it out. The easiest way to tell you how to do this, either call the dealership, that's going to be the fastest way to do it. You could also go on YouTube and learn how to do it really quick. In my opinion, I would take it upon yourself to do it yourself. This is one of those things where you want done yourself. I'm the Investor Ed Coordinator for the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities. So I want to talk to you about some real life investment scams that we need to be aware of. And these happened right here in Pennsylvania. We're going to talk about three, three types of investment scams, affinity fraud, Ponzi schemes, and promissory notes. Affinity fraud happens when someone uses a relationship that they have with you. Maybe it's the Rotary Club, maybe it's your church, maybe it's your golf club or your knitting or quilting club. And they come in and they say, you know what? I've made a lot of money through this investment. It's a great opportunity. You should try it. You don't really know that person, but they count on you not to be prepared and they count on you to trust them because we're believers, we're Christians, we're knitters, we're golfers, you can trust me, right? Pyramid schemes tend not to have an actual business. What happens is I tell you about this great investment, you can trust me, it's gonna give you a 30% return on your investment, you give me all your money, you tell your friends, they invest, eventually I run out of people who are gonna give me money and I'm not gonna be able to um, pay back that money and it's all gonna fall. So we need to be aware of that. The next type of scam that I wanna talk about is a promissory note. A promissory note is basically an IOU that companies will issue to sophisticated investors or other businesses. A sophisticated investor is someone who has more than a million dollars in assets under management and an income of more than $200,000 a year. That does not generally mean the general public. But what happens with promissory notes is the company says, okay, you can buy this promissory note. We're going to invest in this big new machine or infrastructure. And in six months, we're going to repay you with 20% return on your investment. That sounds great, right? So again, affinity fraud, investment scams, we have to be aware of them. And so I wanna talk about the red flags because the reality is I could talk all day about investment scams and you'd all be really bored, but I don't want that. So if something sounds too good to be true, if they tell you it's guaranteed a 20% return on your investment, we all know that's not true, or you're guaranteed not to lose. An investment is a risk, right? Um, tomorrow, it, this opportunity is going to expire in two hours. Doesn't give you that chance to do the research that you need to do. That's a big red flag. Or they ask you to pay by a non-traditional means. We've heard from different people, um, gift cards, um, uh, cryptocurrency, those are all non-traditional means. Another thing that we need to be concerned about is if your person who's trying to sell you an investment says, write the check out to me. The investment, if you're investing, it needs to be written out to a firm, right? Not to a person. Did you know that you can verify an investment offering? So someone says to you, here's this great opportunity for you to make an investment. You can go to the SEC's website at sec.gov and you can type in E-D-G-A-R in the search engine. And that stands for the Electronic Data Gathering Analysis and Retrieval System. When you get into that system, 
you can type in the name of the investment that you're considering. You can type in the name of the company that's offering it. And you can pull the history for that company and the investment itself. If the investment you're considering is not listed, you don't want to buy it. You can go to brokercheck.finra.org and you can find out the history of the investment professional that you either have a relationship now or the person who's offering you that investment. You can also see if an action has been taken by the Pennsylvania Securities uh, Department, Banking and Securities, or another, regular, another regulator, either at the federal or state level. So there's a lot of great information available at BrokerCheck. I always encourage people to check the investor, the investment, the professional before you invest. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, I hope the information, I learned a lot. I know that. Thank you for all of the expertise uh, that came to here today, not only from our Attorney General's office, from our local law enforcement, um, but the ability for us to ask questions, I think, is what we, I, one of the takeaways for me is um, don't be afraid to report it. Um, call your local uh, law enforcement. Uh, they they want to know what's happening in their community um, so that if there's four other people uh, that call in, hopefully they'll be, you know, like, okay, we know this is happening. Let's find a way that we can be proactive. Great.